is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing another video here today bringing you guys another banner design tutorial here today and uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to make a really cool like like nice Fortnite simplistic kind of themed um, banner design so basically I kind of went over really like how I did my uh, Nick Merckx banner and I did end up speeding on to the first part of this video only because I already have a full-blown video on how to make a text effect like this to make it look nice and 3d and just kind of make it look cartoony and whatnot um, even add a backplate on it. I did an entire video on that so I kind of didn't want to go over and kind of go over like another you know 20 minutes 10 minutes on the video I'd rather just speed art it and just show you guys exactly what I did and I didn't even talk about it I was I already I already knew I was gonna go for a speed art and I do also have my camera on I just forgot to record my intro and I even reminded myself in the video and that's the reason why I'm doing it now because I completely forgot so uh, yeah um, basically I'm just gonna tell you guys it's really really awesome um, Super easy, and uh, yeah, I also have morning voice because I just woke up and I have to record this freaking thing. I gotta stop forgetting, honestly. But anyway, guys, much love. Um, you're gonna enjoy this. I'm most definitely gonna enjoy this. The final version came out just as good as the actual Nick Merckx one. Um, we're just like a little less effort, such as word placement and stuff is, because tutorial reasons, right? So, hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. And don't forget to leave a like on the video, 200 likes on the video, equals a secret down below, as always. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Um, I'll see you guys in the video. Okay, no morning voice either, please. All right, homie, so it's gonna get this thing started. You guys just saw me, of course, speed art this little intro part, uh, just so we can get it kind of fast forwarding, because I already kind of did a video on this, I already explained this, hopefully in the last clip, hopefully I remember uh, to explain it. However, anyway, so let's, I'm not, we're not completely done with the text yet. We're just gonna make it just a little bit more pretty afterwards. I wanna do one thing really quickly as well, is kind of set up the actual background, set up the little atmosphere, and uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I simply just kind of literally just now found a nice little simple background image here and I believe this is the same background image as the one that I used uh, on the Nick Merckx uh, banner design so it's a little fuzzy which is okay because we're gonna be blurring it anyway um usually when it comes to like looking for web images on like Google and whatnot you always want to find a very nice high quality one um in this case here I'm gonna go ahead and say select um excuse me filter blur Gaussian blur we're just gonna blur this out to about uh 15 I think 15 is pretty good. Just somewhere you can see that it's reference from, um, or you can see references of, I guess, like Fortnite itself. Like you see, like the little skin. You see the scar for sure. You see these little blasts. Um, uh, the fire rate, whatever. What would it be called? The the after whatever. Um, you see all that stuff, right? So just kind of find a really nice image that goes with, of course, Fortnite theme. Whether you just type in Fortnite background in Google and all that cool stuff. So. I also am going to go ahead and just put on a gradient map, and I'm going to use the same gradient map that I use in the actual Nick Merckx banner, and it was this very, very simple sort of darkish blue um, to a very like high saturated red. So this is it right here, right? This, this uh, hex code is 1C1 uh, F26, and then the red, I believe, was a pretty high saturated red um, ha uh, hashtag hex code C41B1B. Okay, so once you have that good, uh, make sure you guys have that on the left. And toward the right if for whatever reason if yours looks something like this where it's inverted or you don't like how it looks just kind of reverse it and try to see if it's you know a little bit better for you right now I kind of set it up in the way that it helps my image the best um, but of course you might not be using red as well as your background so that's what the secondary color for here would be switched to a different color you would personally want now I'm gonna go ahead and let's make sure this is big enough for the entire thing there we go I have a little background set now, so that looks a, bit, uh, a little bit better for me to work with. So I can see what's going on, actually. So, I'm going to do this really quick little thing about the text, right? So, I do have this little texture here. I'm going to throw this onto the back plate, which happens to be this image right here. I'm just going to duplicate this and merge this all together for us. Take this here. I'm going to clip mask this. This is a very, very simple sort of metal texture. I, I No, it's a grunge texture. I typed in grunge texture, I believe, inside... Um, Google and whatnot, right? You put it on multiply about 20% on passive, otherwise, uh, if it's on normal, and if it's at 100%, it's a little bit way too much. So, multiply 20% on passive is pretty good. If you want to, you can take your soft brush eraser and kind of erase around a little bit. And uh, that's not quite it. I did one more thing as well. If you guys have my stock brush pack, you guys should definitely go purchase it. $5, literally, little self plug in, selfie.com slash SOHQ. Um, but I believe I used one of these brushes. I did use one of these brushes. I don't know exactly which one, but just something really cool. Just kind of like give it more of a, a grungy, uh, appeal to it. Right. So I, I think I used maybe like this one or something like that. It was something like this one. And I kind of like just went like this a little bit, kind of just went like, Hey, I'm just going to kind of move this around a little bit just to give it a little bit of fuzz. I don't know. How would you, how would you describe it? Really? I'm going to put it on overlay. I'm going to lower this opacity down and just a little bit of, you can see like a little bit of a dimension, like a little, little, little. <laughs> 
I just realized, like, I'm saying that quite a lot. A bit of dimension, or uh, sort of just a cool look to it, right? A nice little atmosphere, just building this atmosphere. So, now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and add this little part on this text here. Now, if you look at my text here, if I go back to my Nick Marks banner really quick. Let's open this up really quick. Right, if I go back to this banner here, <clears throat> you kind of see how my text here has this really nice sort of look to it. It's not super flat, it's not very boring and whatnot, it looks very, very nice and like just a very mature cartoony text, right? So the way I actually applied this was I made a duplicate of my first sort of the front plate, so the Fortnite is what I have it here, so I'm going to make a duplicate of that text right there. I'm going to double click on this, I'm going to use the bevel and emboss, embos, whatever the way you say it. And I'm going to go ahead and just fiddle with this a little bit until I get a very cool sort of, you can see it's like almost like a bubbly, that's what the bevel is actually, the emboss itself. Um, like a bubbly effect, right? So very cartoony and very cool. I'm going to put on a stroke as well. Make sure it's on the inside. Make sure your blend mode is on normal. The reason why you can't change any of your blend modes really right now besides the bevel and embos, um is because when you actually rasterize the layer, what you're going to be doing, and then you were to try to change the the layer style to um, what you're going to be using a linear burn, um, it's just not going to work out in your favor because it's not going to give that same effect that you had originally applied. So whatever you're going to do, use blend mode normal. If you want to use, uh, like a, usually I would go for like an overlay, make it white, right? But you can make this color, the same exact color I just made just now. It's just using a simple uh, kind of like a dulled or, or muted kind of yellow and then using white. All right, let's put my blend mode back on normal. And so once I have this, I'm going to take a gradient um, overlay here. We're going to make it black and white, and we're going to go ahead and sort of put this on overlay, and we're going to take this opacity, drop this down just a bit, maybe about 30%, just so we can see that little, uh, you know, kind of like that color gradient going through. I might put it on 20%, actually, and I don't want to go too much, but maybe a little bit of an inner shadow, and I think I already preset these, right? I think I already preset this little option here. Um, this inner shadow here has 10% opacity, distance at, we'll put at 10, 25, and 15 to make everything nice and 5 intervaled. Um, press OK. Now, once you've done this, this is where you're going to have to right click on that text. Go to layer, uh, rasterize layer style, and we're going to change the layer style blend mode from normal um, to, let's put it on near burn, and we might actually have to, yeah, we might actually have to do something really quick. I forgot. Before you went ahead and rasterize this layer type, make sure you take the fill, drop it all the way down to zero. That way you only see the actual layer style itself. Um, because previously you just saw that I had the fill on as well. You don't want to overlap two different colors, otherwise you're going to change your color entirely. So I'm going to go ahead now, and we're going to go and just simply lower this fill down. Put this back to where it was. Lower the fill down to zero, right? And then put it on uh, rasterize layer type. And then we're going to go ahead and go to linear burn, which is right here. Perfect. Um, so yeah, you can see how very, very nice and just like, it looks very crisp in my opinion. I love the way it looks. It just looks like 10 times better. You can lower the past just a little bit. Oops, that's the wrong layer. You can lower the past just a little bit if you guys want to, about 80% or so. If you guys want to as well, you can go ahead and like erase around a little bit. But you can see how it goes from being um, nice and bolded and kind of to a flattish look here. If you don't want to erase, I wouldn't really go for that. I would just leave it just like so because in my opinion, this probably looks the best and you'll probably get the best cartoony sort of text effect. Um, with this little layer style tweak, right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and move my mic a second, sorry. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead now, and we're gonna go ahead and go onto this site here. I'm gonna show you guys this site, because this is where I'm gonna get all of my uh, images here, right? Um, this site right here, fnbr.co, is a very, very well-known site to get uh, Fortnite assets. No kind of sponsorship or anything like that, but when I do like Fortnite thumbnails, I always use this site to get every little thing that they have, because they have basically everything that I personally would want. Um, PNG wise, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take something from here. I'm just gonna take the shotguns again. I'm gonna save this image. You can just save it right on there. Um, save this just like so. I'll bring up this in the folder and I'm gonna go ahead and go back into Photoshop here, right? And we're gonna take this, drag it into here, and here we go. Now we have our first little PNG image inside our text. I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of all this stuff in the group. There we go. So it's behind it. Oh, what's not there? This should all be down here. Please and thank you. Perfect. That's my text, this is my icon, perfect. So, I'm gonna go ahead now and bring up my rulers. That was loud and I apologize. Bring my ruler here. If you guys wanna have an actual ruler that divides the middle, um, that's not something that you have automatically. You What you wanna do is press Control R until your rulers show up, just like so. Take on the left hand side, drag it right over until you feel like a little snap where you think the middle would be. And you'll see like it's like snapping a little bit. That little snap is indicating that, hey, this is where the middle is and this way you can always figure out uh, where the middle is and all that cool stuff and kind of figure where you want to have all of your stuff at. So I'm going to go ahead 
and I'm going to basically kind of leave it like just a little bit of an inch off from the middle here. I'm going to drag this down a little bit more and I'll say that is pretty okay. Now, everything I'm going to basically be doing is I'm just going to kind of duplicate it right over to the other side. So, control J or your keyboard to actually make a duplicate for you guys and or you can hold alt and shift and drag it right over and that'll make a duplicate for you as well as keeping on the same exact X axis, which is pretty handy when it comes to making sure that everything's on the straight and uh, kind of like, you know, everything's where it should be on the opposite side as well. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. And while doing this, you should be able to see that little uh, that little guideline that kind of says, hey, this is where you should stop at just because that is where the middle is compared to your other image here. Um, I believe that is so. And I'm going to go ahead and just move these down now a little bit. Now that I know I have them at the right place, move this down right about here. Right. So we kind of have shotguns here. I believe I had shotguns, something else there. Um, I'll make this a little bit smaller because it was a little bit smaller on the other one. Move that, move that up a little bit now. Okay, so to fill this space, I'm going to go ahead, because I'm doing something a little bit different, right? This is a different text. This is a different kind of thing going on here. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put in... I um, should have probably thought about this. Uh, let's just put in like another gun, maybe a smaller gun like this. Uh, I'll put in the deagle here, right? Show in folder. Take it here. Move it over here. Sweet. Taking this, shrinking this baby down. And we're gonna put a nice little uh, gun here. And I'm not gonna put it exactly um, like kind of like mirrored. For this instance, I'm just gonna fill this little space that's going on here. And I'm gonna say this gun can go right here. And if I really wanna make it look super, super cool, I can actually go ahead and if I wanted to like say, let's just say if it had a dip going down here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna do some really quick. So I can show you guys maybe it's something you might wanna do as well. You see how like everything here is like cut off right here. I want to only have basically like from here, right, until like to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just literally just kind of hover over right that, like just so I'm hovering over the image, right. So what I'm cutting is basically right here, right. Also basically making sure that when I highlight this down a little bit, that it's also above this here. So I want to make sure it's above this little back plate I'm talking about, this little gray or blackish going on here. And I can go ahead and if I were to make a selection. And layer via copy. Now I'm going to take this, drag this back down below everything. But then if I have this little uh, layer here that we've made a copy of, we can have this basically kind of like hovering over um, the little, uh, what do you call it? The text itself, right? It's a little bit choppy here because I should have actually penciled the entire thing. But hopefully that kind of gave you an example of what it should be going, uh, what you should be going for. Uh, yeah, it, look, a little bit, it looks a little bit awkward, honestly. But that's only because previously... I stopped it too, too far below. So it's okay. But just for the instance, that's just kind of how you do it. And what you can kind of do after that is I'm just, I'm literally free balling this right now. Uh, definitely not the best choice of words. Uh, literally just free minding it. Yeah. Let's, let's use the right, the right words. And I can kind of like put a little bit of shadow here, right? Lower this lightness down so we can get a nice black. Take this eraser, right? Lower the opacity down. Right, you can have it like kind of like showing like a little shadow. That the gun is above the text. Very, very cool stuff here, honestly. So I want to go ahead now and I'm going to do like one more gun basically because really it's just kind of up to you at this point. Take some guns, take some fun little things. Um, we'll take. I know I can do a launcher like I did before. I'm going to do this launcher this time. See what happens. I kind of get more color in here. Why not? And I already have the launcher on that side. I'm going to take this, drag this baby over. It's a very weird color scheme but you know whatever and it's also definitely nothing about halloween it's we're very very far out but in this case we're just gonna go with it and roll with it and see what happens here we are right we'll put one more gun we'll actually put one more gun okay 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 let's just do oh the scar let's just do the scar right here save this go back into photoshop and where the scar at and of course i need to bring it up let's bring this up just like so take the scar and i'm gonna go ahead and say we're gonna put the scar right here just like so right we're gonna take it drag it over make a duplicate of it and kind of put it on the other side as well so there's like basically like the whole format that i honestly use right i did a little more thought process on the whole gun choices um more of a color scheme, right? I wanted to go with like a very matte color, like using orange right now with the uh, red background, 
probably my best bet but for now this is gonna work for this this little instance here now as well as I also did I also use like some core cool, like a little explosions and stuff like that but this is honestly where you should probably be taking control and figuring out what you can do next like whether it is taking like a cool um you guys saw on the site over here as well I'll put the site in the description for you guys as well because mostly anyone knows about this by now but uh, at first no one knew about it because just it wasn't really advertised for it I wasn't really up there and whatnot um, so, so those got their images off of uh, like Google and stuff like that. But you can take like character images. You can put them behind people, in front of people. Like this would be pretty cool if you like took this guy right here, and let's just go ahead and put this like right here. You can kind of have him floating in the background even. Um, probably not like where the text where that gun is, but uh, you kind of get the whole the whole thing. You can put him like like right behind everything and or like in front of everything like kneeling down you can do honestly a lot of different things when it comes to this right however just to kind of finish this thing off i'm going to show you guys really quick little color corrections and what i would probably do so when you had a gradient you had the choice of choosing the color like i said black but we use like a darkish blue if you guys don't remember just go back in the video you'll see that for sure but you can also see that there's very nice look, look like very nice dark tones whether whatever color you use prior to the red um, maybe use like a blue one down. I'm gonna show you really quick. Whether you use like a blue or a uh, whatever, you're always gonna have this very, very nice darker color, right? Because we had that nice gradient that's basically black to a uh, nice little color. So if I use on a new layer, right? It's a new layer, right? I'm gonna take my Alt key while I have my soft brush up, and I can hover over my entire canvas and pick whatever color. If he has another little shortcut, but these little like, like nice darker spots will very will make a very nice cohesive. Uh, color that would really look good for like lighting effects So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take a nice fairly sized brush and click it right in the middle of the whole entire Banner just one little brush. I'm gonna change it from normal to linear dodge add It's gonna give us a nice very cool look to it now If you guys want you can bring up the hue and saturation table just by pressing control U on your keyboard It'll bring up this little table here You can mess around with your lightness a little bit if you got to figure it out a little bit more Maybe you want to have more color so you want to drive the saturation up and I'm gonna move this around to kind of see what other colors that might look good and honestly kind of looks pretty good like this right so it's a little bit different than my original color but just using the hue and saturation kind of figures that all out for us now since I'm gonna do that I'm gonna lower this opacity down about 65 and I might do this a couple more times I might kind of find different colors and kind of like make sure that the light looks pretty okay pretty all even out and all that cool stuff um we'll just say like that for now right all right, let's like that for now. Now, one thing to make sure you also do is use a color balance. I think when it comes to like gaming banner designs or any kind of banner design, making sure that you use multiple stock images, whether it's from the same game or not, right? You wanna make sure you kind of have like a nice little color balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open this little color balance up, right? And I always like to go for like a blue or red, excuse me, and go to the left for the magenta and I always like to go right for the blue. And it gives you like a, almost like a cool pinkish tone. Um, but you can really fiddle around with this a lot. You can use different blend modes, I'm sure, if you guys want to give it a shot. But you can see that it kind of gives it all like a mask of a nice, very neutral, even kind of color scheme. And once I have that going for ourselves, we're going to go ahead and kind of add just a little bit, you know, some little brightness and contrast right here, right? So negative brightness, positive contrast, just so we can get a nice little color right there. That looks really, really good, honestly. And, uh... I mean, essentially, we're pretty much done. I'm gonna put just like, you can put, you know, design by SSOHQ right on the bottom. I wouldn't advise you doing this actually, but this is where I would put like little subtext, whether you have like, um, whether the person has social media or you have social media or something like that. You know, subtext here, uh, icons here, you know, Twitch, uh, whatever, whatever, all the social media stuff, right? But uh, basically that is pretty much it on how I created my actual Nick Merckx one. You can see I added a lot more personal stuff and I also put a nice little sharpen on this. I've also put a little bit of a, uh, you can see like a little pattern in the background here to kind of add a little more depth. And the way I actually do that, I, might, I don't mind showing you guys. Um, I just wanna make the video too long and whatnot, but if I just fill the background with any color whatsoever, right? And if you guys have my personal um, pattern pack, which is also on sale by, it's actually $3. You can see it right here. If I just go over here, I'm gonna just take one like this, perfectly fine. Press okay. Now. The way you're gonna have to be able to erase this is you just kind of simply just rash the layer after you put it on, just like so. Then you can take your eraser and or you can use the masking tool, but it doesn't really matter for now. And I mean by that is using this right here, and then you can kind of like make sure you can, you know, erase it. If you use a black, it'll bring it back in, right? I'm just gonna use the white, erase a little bit in different spots, kind of adds like a really nice like texture to it. And as also as well, I add these little cool little things. I just pen tooled them and then put it on uh, opacity, like, uh, you know, let me show you guys really quick as well. Why not, right? But I, this is why I really wanted you guys to kind of figure all this kind of stuff out and kind of figure out what you might want to do for yourselves. But 
I don't mind showing you guys a little bit more. Let's just kind of like do something like this. Um, and then like this, right? And then a little bit like this. So what I essentially did was I filled this in with black, just like so. Uh, delete the path. Went over here to the blend mode, put it on overlay. Oh, why is it on? Oh, I don't know why it was only like showing that it was only one that was overlaid. That's so awkward. Why is it doing that? Okay, there we go. You can kind of see it's kind of it's almost because actually uh, it's a little bit of a lighter color down here, but you can kind of see what's going on here for the whole little darker little uh, like little stems, little spikes and stuff. It's kind of like a staple in most um, Fortnite like thumbnails. But also what I did was I went ahead and just kind of pen tooled on the either side of these little spikes here. I changed my uh, brush settings to two size, 90% uh, hardness. With my pen tool, I then right clicked, stroke path on a new layer, take a brush settings just like so, and it should be on a new layer, it is. Okay, so I can just change this different color, color overlay, we'll change it to like a yellow, right? Kind of complement what's going on, on the inside. So there we go, that's how I kind of did that little, uh, little effect there. Very, very cool stuff here. And when I would say to finalize your banner design, what I would do is make a selection of everything in the actual document. So from the top to the bottom layer, just hold shift and then press control J to make a duplicate. Control E and merge it all together. Go to filter, filter gallery. This is how you get the best quality out of your uh, stuff here. Go to artistic here on these little filter galleries. Go to paint dubs or whatever you say. Uh, one size, one sharpness, press OK. And then instantly your quality, if I just turn this on and off, you can see, like, if you look over here, you can kind of see what's going on here. The quality just sharpens so much. It looks so, so, so good as you guys can see, like, why this looks so, so good. And uh, secondly, what I did is after I did the whole filter gallery one, I made another completely duplicate of my entire thing. I went to filter. I went to just regular old sharpen and just kind of sharpen it one more time. And if you guys need to, you can erase around a little bit or kind of figure out where it might not need sharpen. Um, but yeah, it's basically how I did it. So honestly, this is a very, very clear tutorial, I think. Um, it came up pretty well, even though it's just very kind of like loose and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to kind of see what you guys would do next. And I also appreciate the support on that actual tweet. Nick Merckx finally saw it after like 600 likes. Um, but uh, I wanted him to see it so bad, but because uh, he's just like, just a cool ass individual, right? So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Um, really quick shout out to all you guys on Twitter. If you guys have no clue, I've been working so far in 2018 with people like Complexity, T Martin, Keemstar, Pokemane. It's kind of in, like it's insane. I know it should be Pokemon, but most people call it Pokemon. Um, it's insane. Like I want to just say thank you guys so very much. Um, all these opportunities that are coming to me are happening because of you guys supporting me. Um, whether you guys do or not, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, I would, I would gladly enjoy that. Um, most of you guys kind of keep most of my updates and whatnot at SwitchQ. And uh, yeah, check out my new website actually, SwitchQ.com. Just kind of check it out and my new works, my little uh, logos and stuff like that. Um, yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, just much love to you guys, and I'm gonna just get out of here. All right, so much love. Talk to you guys later. So I'll you out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and uh, stay freaking touchy, guys. Later. Much love. Wow. Kisses. Salute.